Hello and welcome to China Shortcuts, the European Chamber's weekly catch-up on China's business landscape. This episode was recorded on 17th July 2024. Chinese export growth accelerated to the fastest rate recorded in 15 months in June, while imports fell sharply after two consecutive months of expansion. In U.S. dollar-denominated terms, the value of China's exports surged 8.6 percent year-on-year. Data for the first half of the year showed a 3.6 percent increase in China's total export value. Meanwhile, the country's imports fell 2.3 percent year-on-year in June and rose 2 percent in the first half compared to the same period last year. The half-year data revealed that the total value of China's imports was about three quarters of its total value of exports, resulting in a trade surplus of 435 billion U.S. dollars. In the first half of 2024, the European Union remained China's second-largest trade partner, with China's total value of exports to the EU almost double the amount of its imports from the bloc. The growth of China's economy slowed in the second quarter, with the country battling several challenges, including weak consumption and growing tensions over trade imbalances with some of its largest trade partners. China's gross domestic product rose 4.7 percent year-on-year in the April-June period, which was the lowest level of quarterly growth since the first quarter of 2023. At the two sessions held in March, China set the annual target for its GDP growth rate at about 5 percent, matching last year's goal. On 15 July, along with the GDP figures. The National Bureau of Statistics released a series of other macroeconomic indicators, some of which suggested a slowdown in growth in June. Production at larger industrial firms increased 5.3 percent year on year, with the pace of growth decelerating to the slowest in three months. The total value of retail sales edged up 2 percent from the same period last year, which was the lowest increase since December 2022. As for the first half of the year, industrial production expanded 6 percent, while retail sales rose 3.7 percent year on year. The surveyed urban unemployment rate stood at 5.1 percent. On 11th July, the State Council announced a list of temporary policy adjustments to be implemented in six cities: Shenyang, Nanjing, Hangzhou, Wuhan, Guangzhou, and Chengdu, with the goal of attracting foreign investment. The nine city-specific measures focus on promoting further opening of the services sector. Notably, however, the listed provisions are narrowly defined. For instance, foreign investors will be allowed to set up non-profit elderly care facilities in Hangzhou, Guangzhou, and Chengdu. Similarly, in Shenyang, Nanjing, Guangzhou, and Chengdu, they will be able to operate travel agencies and offer outbound travel services. While the release of these provisions is seen as a positive step, their impact is expected to be highly limited due to their narrow scope. On 11th July, the European Commission announced a preliminary anti-dumping tariffs on Chinese imports of titanium dioxide, a chemical product used in a wide range of industrial and consumer products, ranging from paint and coatings to textiles and pharmaceuticals. The Commission launched an anti-dumping probe into the product in November 2023, and has now issued provisional anti-dumping duties ranging from 14.4 to 39.7 percent. Interested parties can submit their written comments on the regulation within 15 days of it coming into force. The European Chamber published its annual business confidence survey in early May. The Chamber's long-format podcast, China Dispatches. Is dedicating three episodes to discuss some of the survey's findings with members from relevant industries. Check the latest episodes of the Dispatches series to hear on-the-ground insights on European companies' decarbonization strategies and the challenges they face reaching their targets in China. You can also find out more about the sectors in which businesses report some recent market opening. And stay tuned for our upcoming episode on competition. You can find all episodes of China Dispatches on the Chamber's website and WeChat account. They are also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to tune in again next week. In the meantime, please find useful links in the episode notes.